Hello, welcome to episode 47 of I'm Fine, a chat between myself, Damo, and a man who sees coat hooks as symbols of global elitism, and giving in to their passive and highly functional offering can only be a sign of cozying up to cronyism and corporate greed. I see that... coat hooks as drunk octopuses wanting a fight. Oh, you do, don't you? Yeah. I think a Twitter thing called Faces and Things. I've got the book. Oh, have you? Faces and Places. Faces and Places. <laughs> There's a chat around the subject of health, wealth, well-being, fitness, sport, shits and giggles. Well, no giggles about shits whilst Mark is in the room, oh, but you know what I mean. Let we're it go. All, we're, we're, Move on. <laughs> we're all work in progress and this podcast is no exception. In short, it's a poke at our perfectly imperfect lives and if we can make just one person feel like they're not alone in all this man, then our work here is done. Warm up and stretch, uh, catch ups and work life ballet. Uh, we've just got some things we want to put out there. Yeah. Haven't we? Just yeah. some... Here's some stuff we've been listening to and seen and want to want to just put out there. Putting our cards on the table. And in a judgmenty kind of episode, non- we're not going to be judgmental. <laughs> no. We're just going to offer up. I think people will read view. will read perhaps that we're mm. saying something with our sort of tongue firmly in our cheek. Yes, maybe. I think you can present something where you do have a bias, but you can present it in a neutral fashion. Let's see how we go, shall we? Let's give it a go. <laughs> in Braid Food, um, we're going to have a little look at what judgment actually is. So how are you? Yeah. What's new with you, Mark? Uh, anything new? What's new with me? Or is it uh, same shit, different day? Um, are you up, you down, you in between? I put this on my Insta story and I've sent it to one or two people. There's something called, um, this is just to tell you how I am, I think. Okay. It's called Dinos and Comics. I don't oh, know if you've yeah. seen it. You sent me the... You sent me the the explanation of the GameStop hack, didn't you? No, you sent it to me. Oh, did I? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good. With, but that's what that's the thing you want about. No. Oh, it was two dinosaurs explaining stuff. Yeah, but that wasn't on GameStop. That was a woman in a car. No, I sent you the the two. Did I, I don't think I did send it you. You sent a, a woman in a car explaining GameStop. But there's one about with the two dinosaurs doing it. Yeah. Okay. But you're talking about dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> this is a cracking start. Yeah. Smooth, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Go on. So two two dinosaurs. You'll even know what I I guarantee you'll know what these are. Yeah. No, you don't have to read it. I identify the dinosaurs. The triceratops. Uh, the, two triceratops, yeah. All right. I tried pterosaur. Okay. It's easy I for you I, to say. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's vital to the question because no. they could they couldn't. I wonder talk. what you were showing. You just pointed at me. I didn't know what you want me to do. One says, Why didn't you reply to my text? And the other one said, I didn't think you wanted to talk to me. And the first one says, I texted first. And the other one goes, yeah, but still, yeah. and I thought, yeah. And we were talking about radical acceptance when I came in and that thing's about being fact and that, that something is simple. And I, get, I, get, I think that this ties in with the judgment bit. Someone sends you something, yeah. sends one something, mm-hmm. and you're able to go, they don't want to speak to me. Yeah, They've just texted you and asked you how you are and your response is... Mm. And it's 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 thoughts becoming fact, isn't it? Your overriding thought is, why should anyone talk to me? They they're only doing it. Yeah, they don't really want to reply. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that was interesting when we come into judgments. Is that quite often our judgments are based on thoughts? And I think what we're going to do, especially when we're going to do that Twitter thread, is very much around these are just facts. We're not going to have any intonation or bias in them, even yeah. if we have it. We're just going to go. Here's a thing. Is it a nightmare when you've just like I know I've sent you something and I can't find it. I don't know what I sent it you on. I d- is it on a text? Is it on... Oh, you sent this one to me. Okay. I didn't even read this. Is that the picture? The... Yeah. 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 What's that one? Yeah, that's pretty much that. what you, like, you just said. That's the GameStop one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I have my bike back? No, I sold it, hoping to buy it back cheaper. But a bunch of people manipulated the market for bikes and increased the price. Sounds like you started the manipulation. Also sounds like you have a problem. Get me my bike. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the whole GameStop thing is interesting, isn't that? Yeah, bonkers, isn't it? But a little bit like what we're coming to in a bit, we're going to be talking about moral judgment in a bit. And the GameStop thing reminds me of that. It's all okay until it's not okay. Yes. By somebody. Yes. The status quo, or the the establishment, the financial establishment, are being played at their own game. And it's like, oh no, no, we're going to change the rules now. There's suddenly all these alerts and these. Oh, you can only you can only buy so much stock now on all these yeah. platforms. Yeah. And you're like, hold on a minute. That was you're never li- the rule. <laughs> you're literally moving the goalposts here. It's like silver's now going to be the one. Have you heard? Silver. Yeah, they're trying to get the run on silver. Oh, are they? Yeah. Right. I've got a lot of silver coins actually. Remember, I used to say about yeah, my you coup said, Still. Yeah. Okay, that's good then, right? Yeah. I listened back to the pod and I mentioned Exchange and Mart, which used to be a magazine back in the day, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exchange and Mart used to have people advertising to buy coins 
off you because the old shillings and florins back in the day mm. had a certain amount of silver in them. Some right. The older ones, like 50% silver. So right. like a shilling was like quite a lot of silver in it. So I think it's anything pre-1947 is X amount silver and anything something like pre... I've got these dates wrong, so I haven't looked at them ages, but something like pre-1914 was mm. like 50% silver. And so what Exchange of Mark did, it said, like, we'll buy your silver coins off you at eight times face value. So a florin would be, yeah. so that's 10p, so mm -hmm. 80p. Mm -hmm. This became really big because when the gold price soared, silver often comes in line with gold. All right. Less so nowadays it used to. Mm -hmm. So this was in my, I actually paid truant off school to do this. I, I set up a little chair outside um, the Corn Exchange in Bristol. Oh, yeah because they were having an exchange in Mark, we'll buy your silver coins. Right. So I went in and everyone inside, this was when it was starting to take off, was going like, we'll give you 20 times Whoa. The, the things. So I offered 24 times. So I just sat outside with a little cardboard thing oh, saying, okay. I'll give you 24. And they just all sort of looked at me and I went, see what they're offering in you in there. Then come back out. Then come back out here. And so I've got a massive bag. Of, wow. Which obviously has a was, lot of silver in it. I was going to ask where you keep all this stuff. Okay, my first question was, because you have investments and shares and stuff, do you feel more One share. No, I've only got one share. I don't do... I don't do... Oh, you've only got one? No, I don't do stocks and shares, definitely. Oh, so you're more comfortable with physical things, physical like gold assets, or, yeah. or silver. Yeah. Now, do you have one of those little drawers in the kind of bowels of a bank <laughs> but back to kind of Bourne like Jason Bourne has a little no, I, have security. A wash, I have a wash bag <laughs> do, you? <laughs> yeah. do you know anyone who has a, like a key to a one of those drawers in the in the bowel of a bank do you know anyone who has that no. I kind of like the idea of it yeah. I like it in films when they go in and they pull the drawer out and it's just a piece of paper yeah. it's got like oh it's got like a clue or it's just got a number on it and no one knows what the number's yeah. for yeah. It's, it's probably worth millions well I couldn't quite work out in my mind, was that when we had whatever it was, 10 years of austerity with the Conservative government where they're trying to save, you know, eight quid by... When I used to work for the probation service, it was things like everything's going out second class. And I mentioned to you, we wouldn't have white envelopes because we we're having brown to save money. Oh, was that what it was? That, that yeah. Was that and we had recycled paper for the photocopier that was basically, it was like as rough as a badge as asked. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. it didn't photocopy well. It disintegrated <laughs> in water. <laughs> yeah. But it's like it saved, you know, 50p. Yeah. We had all those years of austerity and it was like, well, we've managed to save a tiny bit here and we've cut 20,000 policemen and we've done this and we've done that. And I'm looking at the moment and it's I'm just gone. going, I don't understand the economics. It's all gone economics. with knobs on, hasn't it, now? Yeah. It almost that doesn't matter. None but, of that matters anymore. But this must knock that into a tin hat. We must yes. just be... Yeah, oh, absolutely. But I don't understand it. I don't understand it. <laughs> or where they get the money from. And it's not even a case of let's print more, because that doesn't work either, does it? I always know what, you know, well, they didn't have any money. Now they've suddenly got more money than... And they just keep it just keeps appearing, doesn't it? Well, I was thinking, and you think I, is something is something going to suffer? What what is suffering now? Because if they had that money, why couldn't yeah a, a tenth of that go into the NHS? Well, I'm doing my tax. you know rather than it just constantly being under yeah, strain. No, no, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's my point. And it's yeah. it was it was we've been talking this week about furlough and about the, mm. yeah the way it's been. Yeah, the point I was going to say was when you've got a buoyant economy mm. and people are paying taxes, the taxes can be reinvested in order to improve the National Health Service, yeah. full stop. At the moment, a very high proportion of people's wages through furlough mm. are being paid by the government. Mm -hmm. And I know my self-employment grant that I got that was paid from the government, it wasn't massive, but it was it was a contribution, so I'm not knocking it, yeah. was taxed and did have national insurance taken out of it. Yeah. So back in the day, the government might have got X thousand from me every month. Or I, I earned X thousand and they took some tax off, yep. so they're 500 quid a month better off. Mm -hmm. Now they're giving me 2000 They're taking a little bit of tax back, which yeah. is their money already. Yeah. So there's yeah. no extra money. The tax receipts from furlough and, well, from the self-employment scheme, it's just their money that they've lent to me and taken back the next <laughs> yeah. day. It's yeah. literally like that. Yeah, did it even hit your bank? No. <laughs> no, it, no. They, were just... they said your, your self-employed grant, for I think, for three months was £2,500. Yeah. And deductions are. Yeah. So I ended up getting about, I don't know what it was, two grand or something. Yeah. So they took the money back before it had even yeah, yeah, hit me. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm thinking, but you're still having to pay for everything that you've always had to pay for. You're having to pay even more in terms of things like mm. building nightingales and all the other track yeah. and trace. So they've spent billions and billions and billions. They've still got to do everything else. They're still mm. doing HS2 as far as yeah. I'm aware. Yeah. I don't understand. 
Mm. Because if it's that hard, let's just keep doing this. <laughs> yeah, right. Why, why does anyone need to work? I really, I don't yeah. get it. No, I don't. There's so many things. So there's no I discussion on the news about we're fucking collapsing. Do you know what I mean? Is this going to be like, I can remember. Yeah. Haven't we had the hardest recession ever known? Yeah. And everyone's like, well, more banana bread. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people, you know, millions of people without a paddle. There's like, an awful lot who are Massive and employed, but there's not. It's not doom not, and gloom. In terms of how it's being portrayed, there is. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, let me say that. Yes. This is doom and gloom for millions and millions yes, of people absolutely. who have had their livelihood taken away but because of lockdown. Most of the doom and gloom it's on the own. nightly news isn't about, isn't about that. Yeah. And I think there's a bigger travesty going on, isn't there? Yeah, and that isn't reported. I think, I think we've heard enough about it. We know, we know. We yeah. have the daily numbers, but what yeah. about what about the impact? Like now, well, what's just gone the last year, mm. now, and the next, the next 10 years? Yeah. Yeah, on all sorts of levels, economic. I'm, mental, I'm in line for two operations, and I looked at the waiting list things, and it's 4.6 million the waiting list for the, they're put under minor operations. Whoa! The number who of people who have who have waited more than a year has gone up to so and so, so and so. Mm. So I dug out. I've got an operation for two, one or two hernias, and I've got an operation on my heart. Yeah. yeah. I went back to the hernia operation yeah. to find the letter. It was eight months ago I got the letter. And the letter said, you have been advised that you need an urgent operation on your hernia. Right. We will supply a date in due course. So I'm not on a waiting list. No, no, But you're I've been not. waiting eight months. And if, and you've, got, if you've got a date, you'll be on a wait. Yeah, yeah. You, you haven't even made that. So that's 4.6 million people who have got a date. Yeah. And I'm on a waiting list for a waiting How list many for more? a date. Same again, more. Yeah. Who are just waiting for a date. Yeah. So there is, and I, we don't get a feeling of this suffering, but when we've no. had recessions in the past and we've seen you know, car plant in Sunderland is, mm-hmm. is laying off 500. It's been big yeah. news because that's 500 lives devastated. Yeah. And what we haven't heard, I was speaking to a, a friend of mine uh, the other day or this week who works for the NHS, um, not on kind of clinical front, front no. line, but, no. but she says that, you know, we're talking about what's going on in the news and what, what you're hearing about. She said the thing you were not hearing about, because we hear that the NHS is overwhelmed, mm. but we just hear that it's ICU. Yeah. And she goes, it's not. Mm-hmm. The other service, it's not just that. Mm. <laughs> all the other services, all the other things that minor ops and mm. even the mental health stuff, everything, they are absolutely swamped. And mm. They're getting absolutely rinsed. You know, that's the stuff we're not hearing about. Yeah. All the, they're, they're, it's not just about saving people from, from COVID. It's not. Mm. There's loads of other things. We don't even hear about that. We don't even give it a picture back to our whole point about balance. And yeah. Like you said, you just you know you look at some of the numbers and you're going, hold on, this just doesn't it doesn't make sense. It's it's not just about that, you know, economics and yeah, world economics is about so many different things, isn't it? Knock ons yeah. and yeah, why can't they give a bit of a, a bit of bit, the context? But also this about anything this leads into our judgment. A judgment is yeah. made by the news where the emphasis shall be, yeah. and the emphasis for millions and millions of people in this country is not having a job, not having enough money, not having a business. Yeah. No, that's right. And that, that is secondary or is considered secondary by the mainstream media. Um, and I think that's quite worrying that it's, you know, mm. it, it comes back to our Orwellian thing. And I, I used this a few pods ago, you know, like the thing from Animal Farm about everyone being equal, mm. but some are more equal than others. <laughs> yeah. And this this is the situation. Every every death is equal and sad, but some deaths are. Yeah. And I saw one of the tributes that they did on BBC Breakfast where they just had a sort of massive montage of photographs of everyone who died with covid and i felt in a way that doesn't happen for anything suicide or cancer or diabetes or dementia yeah and i realize it's newsworthy but that's treating people's lives in a disproportionate way yeah it's somehow sadder that you've died of covid yeah or it's more newsworthy so judgment has been made it's exactly that they're made well they're also making the assumption that's what we what we want to hear about yeah yeah i don't think people do I think people want a bit of, you know, balance about other things. Yeah. This is our jokey bit. I'm that, recording, that, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, this is the bit where we do all the jokes at the beginning. Yeah, we, we, ain't got, we ain't got any, I said, I said we ain't got any bookmarks. It's going to get a bit serious. Getting serious quick. I take on board from a personal level some of the, the things you've been saying at the end of the last pod and in the last few weeks around judgment. Mm. And I think what's happening is quite often we reflect what's uppermost in my mind. And so... Or one's mind. So because mindfulness and the dialectical Mm. coursework that I'm doing has been uppermost, I've been very conscious. And one thing we were going to talk about, and this is like 20 pods ago, was the the adverse reaction to the word should because of the Mm. inherent judgment. And that might even be worth just chucking in very quickly now. 
is that for, for myself and a number of other people I know should becomes the biggest judgmental because it's yeah. not only going, the person might say it in terms of wanting to advise or assist, right. yeah. but it's, it's laced with. It's, yeah. Laced and layered, isn't it? Yes. For, with different things. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can. Because for me, it also implies that you ought to be aware and you're not. Yeah. So it's not just an advice. It's advice with a, with a, with a punch to the stomach, isn't it? Yeah. And it is just the presentation. It could be, I guess you've got a number of, you know, I've got a dilemma mm. I'm discussing and someone goes, well, you should stop <laughs> obsessive thoughts. Yeah. And, but it can be said in a different way. It could, could be said, if you're having problems with your mental health, one of the options might be yeah, yeah. to discover mindfulness. Yeah. But if someone goes, well, you should stop being obsessive and compulsive about things. And that's happened a lot to me. I've had people say to me, not only you shouldn't be so obsessive, mm. but people are also going it the other way. Mm. It's all right for you because you're obsessive. Yeah. When I talk about my body or something and someone goes, yeah, well, it's yeah. okay. It isn't all right. Mm. You have to work really hard to, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, and, don't, it doesn't always have to come from someone else. Mm. Our own our own thoughts are full of should, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. You could sit there giving this. your own, you, yeah, why well, didn't I should have done that? Yeah, yeah. You know, constant kicking, isn't it? Yeah. Of ourselves. I sent this to you as a thread. Mm. I think what we've agreed is that we want it in a way to be presented as as a thread, as as, as a linear line of statements. Yeah. And... I don't think we'd be reading them out if we disagreed with them all. No. I don't like, think I necessarily agree with all of them no, totally. I, no, yeah, I think that's a, that's a fair caveat. And yeah. it's just, a, this is a really interesting view. Yes. And uh, what we're just saying, it's another view. Yeah. And another view you wouldn't ordinarily hear unless either you go looking for it. Yeah. Or you follow certain people. Yes. Probably we touch on the confirmation bias because yes. obviously we follow people and that, that uh, subscribe and there is, there is a touch of view. confirmation bias here because it's coming yeah. from a certain angle. But I think the caveat isn't, well, the subtext of this isn't, well, we are a bit anti-vax, we're a bit anti-lockdown, and here's 16 reasons why. Yeah. It's here's yeah, 16 reasons why you might need to ask a question or you might yeah. need to investigate further or you might need to just go, I want to know more about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to be, or I'm going to be quick, <laughs> yeah because e e each one could be <laughs> yeah each one each is a podcast <laughs> yeah absolutely um so we'll get the links this is a guy called dr simon to be honest i don't know his full background it came to me via somebody else i don't know we're we... assuming he's a doctor yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like do what we don't know like dr fox <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> and dr dre <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to be fair he is you know he's dr. kind of dre. well qualified in dropping yeah dropping rhymes and beats isn't he yeah um so dr simon this is his thread on twitter he started off the first introduction was every day we are inundated by horror stories around the virus it seems as though as if we were facing the greatest health crisis of humankind nevertheless the situation should be kept in perspective so maybe that's our key word perspective perspective yeah sure um, the first part of the thread is actually around life expectancy he compares this to the spanish flu Mm. And in 1918, when there was a Spanish flu, the average age of deaths of infected people was 28, mm. when the life expectancy was 56. So it's hitting yeah. a different area of the populace. Yeah. And now... So the, cutting, well, that was cutting people halfway through their lives. Yes. And the average for 2020, and I've seen one or two slightly different figures on this, but broadly... They're broadly... Right, 81 and 81. So the life yeah. expectancy in this country is 81. It has been falling for a couple of years, okay. a little bit. Okay. This is in the United Kingdom. So it's um, 82 and a half for women and 78.8 for males. So the fact that the mean death of people dying for COVID is 80.4 is bang in the middle of that. Yeah. So basically... The average age, and you've got to remember there are younger people as well, so we're putting this in perspective. Of course, but yeah. But, but they're also but, but very much age, older. There's not that many older, no. is there? But no. it, it's a reduced amount. Yeah. So he makes the point that if we look at the life expectancy of the Spanish flu, because a lot of people have gone, well, we had this with the Spanish flu. Yeah, because there was comparisons recently made to over the last five years and, and more uh, mortality rates. The, the excess deaths are higher. And it's like, well, people are living longer now. So you forgot about that context. Yeah. So it was the, BB, the BBC. The, the beginning of the, the last five-year period, people weren't living as long. They are now. And as actually there's more of them because there's a population explosion. So you have to, you know, percentages are very dangerous, aren't they? And they yes. don't always yeah. you know, give the right views. You and, have, and yeah. people, I think people weren't going, no, you're wrong. And people were just going, hold on, there's, there are other things to consider yeah. here. It's not quite as black and white. Yeah. Back to our point of don't take everything on face value. Yeah. There are lots of reasons why. And this was the BBC who said, 
this was the greatest number of excess deaths since the mm. Second World War. Yeah. And it wasn't taken in the context of what the population is, what yeah. life expectancy yeah. is, sure. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. So this is going to be balanced because the the fourth thing he said, and I think this is so key, and it was only when I reread this, I suddenly thought to myself, this is so insightful. Yeah. He said, going back on the figures he's just said about life expectancy, as we just learned, COVID does not significantly reduce the lifespan of people. Now, before everyone goes, well, it does if you're 20 and you die, we accept that. Yeah. What we're saying is the vast majority, the average age, yeah. the vast majority mm -hmm. of people are towards that age in terms of where they are in their life. Yeah. Of course, there are exceptions and of course, there yes, are younger yeah, people. Yeah. What he said was, let's have a look at which factors actually decrease our lifespan. As yes. in, in the world. So if I quite often use the analogy, a Martian comes down and he's mm -hmm. going, just a minute, more people are dying at the moment because of this, this and this. Yeah. What are the reasons behind what's that? What going, are the facts? What's going on? Yeah. And we <laughs> yeah. go, well, COVID's one thing, but that's happening with this part of the population. But the rest of the world are being mm. affected by this and have been for a long time. Yeah. He's listed this, and you can have arguments on either side. Yes, we're not judging, we're not putting a view, yep. uh, our view, we're just putting a view. Mm -hmm. Sugar consumption. Sugar-rich diets lead to an early death. It increases our risk of developing metabolic disorders such as obesity and diabetes and can shorten our life expectancy by several years. Yes. Looking at the top deaths per million, and this is very, very interesting, the top six of nations in the world that have their highest percentage of obesity mm -hmm. really surprised me. I might get one of these wrong. This isn't in any particular order. The USA, UK, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, Finland, which absolutely blew my mind, those last three. Mm. And someone from the BBC was saying obesity could be one of the reasons for our excess deaths. Mm -hmm. But three of the nations high in the obesity table are Australia, New Zealand and Finland yeah. that have had very low deaths. Yeah. But there is no denial that obesity per se shortens people's life so yeah that was the sugar yeah for sure next one bearing that in mind have you ever heard of a sugar related lockdown or a sugar ban for children even though obesity amongst children and adults is dramatically increasing yeah of course you can't catch yeah obesity but you can in terms of of, of people's understanding and sure. learning yeah, yeah, in yeah. terms of i don't mean you can catch it but you can you can have um, a situation within a culture where it becomes the norm mm -hmm. that obesity grows because of lack of education yeah, sure. next one he said was loneliness it's been estimated to shorten a person's life by 15 years equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day again there's probably research that doesn't put it at 15 years of course, yeah but measures such as lockdowns and limitations of contacts cause loneliness especially in the group of elderly yeah and obviously has ramifications around around suicide. Mm -hmm. Just just as a quick pointer, for every one of these, yep. he's got you yes. know, here's some so here's some evidence to back that up. Yeah. And they're proper yeah. a lot of these are, are American government yeah, that's based right. things. Yeah, yeah. Next one, lack of exercise. A review paper states that physical activity is generally a favorable to lifespan longevity. I think most people would agree on that. Mm -hmm. The principle of stay home and closing all sports clubs and gyms yeah. has an adverse effect on public health. Yeah. Don't think I'd disagree with that. No. I don't think most people would. No, no, no. Vitamin D might have a slight bias on this. It has dramatic <laughs> consequences for the vitamin D blood serum level. This is the um, staying at home bit. Yeah. By spending an above average period inside and having many summer vacations cancelled, people are expected to have much lower vitamin D in their blood than usual. Yeah. One of the interesting bits of research I read this week was showed that not looking at vitamin D in terms of immunity, but looking at it in terms of susceptibility to fractures. All right. Vitamin D deficiency caused a rise of 30% of fractures in care homes. Right. And I know from my dad, the fall that he had mm. predicated and, and ended up on his life being lost much sooner because he had a fall. Right. And although he didn't fracture anything because he was a fit guy, yeah. it had a, a it had massive effect. Right, right. He sent us a couple of pictures here, which is actually looking at something from the Netherlands. And it says vitamin D is a hormone that regulates the immune response. We've said about this. Yeah. Deficiency is associated with a higher risk of infection and mortality. Despite what they say about COVID, that bit is true. There are UK hospitals treating people, children with rickets because yeah. of vitamin D deficiency. Right. It is most noticeable during the winter when vitamin D stores are depleted. And this is why we've got a seasonality to yeah. COVID. Of course, because yeah. this is, people get more ill in cold yeah. weather and long dark nights. Yeah, sure. 
People of colour are more vulnerable to vitamin D deficiency due to larger quantities of melanin. In the elderly, vitamin D synthesis in the skin is reported to be widely diminished. Locking them up was a mad idea that could have cost them many years. Mm. And then there's a, a paper on vitamin D and ageing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is interesting that the government now are offering 2.5 million vulnerable people vitamin D. But I've looked at the way to find it and it's quite difficult. You actually sort of have to apply oh, okay. for it and get it by a certain date. You and, do. you know, for people that aren't on yeah. computers, maybe isn't that easy. Can I give people it when they go for their vaccines? Just a thought. Yeah, what, give them a pot oh, of vitamin yeah. D? Here's a little... Yeah, that would cost about £2, wouldn't that? Oh, yeah, maybe not. Mm. Crazy idea. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going to get money for that from? <laughs> yeah. Um, so one is, he's called this fear porn, and we've called um, the one of the ones we're using at the moment is um, doom scrolling. Yeah. We've been saying about fear that, Fear porn, we? I'm not really a fan of these names, but just no, for the record. No, but I think doom scrolling is. Yeah. In term, yeah. Anyway, Fear he's put. Bit, yeah. yeah. Um, media influencers, politicians, and public relations think tanks are currently spreading fear. We are cluttered with mostly subjective COVID related news 24 mm-hmm. 7. And I read something today from someone who said when you go in the supermarket, it's non stop. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's like stay apart, stay apart, recognize everybody. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it actually said in Sainsbury's the other day, which I thought was interesting please respect that some people are unable to socially distance. Eh? Hey? And I felt like Uh-oh. saying, I don't quite get that bit. Who? I don't know. Rude, rude, rude people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pushy people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tactile people. <laughs> <laughs> Huggers. Huggers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're saying the taken measures did reduce not only our rights, but also medial plurality. Don't quite Yeah, quite my thing on the, the fear thing is, yeah, there's, there's hard-hitting messages to get home here. Yes. No, no one's denying that. Yeah. But... I mean, we've talked about some of the videos that they've been showing. Yeah. I don't think it's just us, is no. it, clearly? But I, some of the things are so disproportionately scaremongering. Yeah, they are quite. Than your average, you know. They're quite average, cinematic now, aren't they? Yeah. It's going back to the old days when you used to get quite dangerous uh, Yeah, the kind of, of adverts. The kind of like, stock footage of people digging graves. Yes. It's on the BBC. Yes. Um, yeah. The morbid music, the soundtracks in the background. I mean, they're really yeah. kind of... They are really ramping up it, the fear they? factor. You know, crying relatives. Yeah. Of course, it's sad not saying that. Yeah. But. yeah. So in the local shopping area mm. to my house, mm. I drove through there the other day, and they have a number of um, just sort of poles in the road for mm. street furniture. And every one of those is now covered in a, a probably about a four foot high oblong warning, which basically goes wear masks. It's right. bright yellow with red writing saying wear masks. Yeah. And there must be 40 of these in the shopping center. Now, mm. That's fine. I think by now people know, Yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. So South Gloucestershire Council have put these in. But the, the point I thought is that when you go down to the, the high street, it's basically like looking at the side of a fag packet. Yeah. It's oh, just it, like warning, yeah. warning, warning. It, it's overload fear. and it's yeah. confusion as well because yeah. not all the messaging is the same. No, no. We're all, you know, think of all the messaging we've had in the last year. All of those are still up. Even the first ones are still up. Yeah. And now one mask, two mask, three mask. <laughs> <laughs> Um, going on to the fear, fear increases the stress hormone cortisol, which we've mentioned before. Cort- yep. Constant fear leads to the immune system becoming resistant and include, increases inflammatory cytokines that further compromise the immune response. Fear yep. can thus be considered a gradual killer. Next one is, so why does the media do the opposite of what is saving lives? And this is one of the very quick questions I was going to ask is, why every day isn't there a government information film instead of those briefing, briefings going... If you're obese, or if you're vitamin D deficient, or if you're this, or if you're this, you stand more risk of dying. Therefore, how about trying this, this, and this? How about the BBC having a series, not a one-off documentary of going... Uh, educational films. Yes. How to, how to incre- increase your overall health. Yes. And, and if, give people the education that they need. And if the BBC and the government are, are going, every day we're going to give scaremongering messages about your, how you're going yeah. to die, why not balance that with... Instead of taking it, how you're going to die is how you can increase your chances of staying yeah. alive, and there isn't anything about that. Increasing the length of your life, yeah, something absolutely. like the One Show could be doing something yeah. every day. Going, did you know if you just did they're making, this? Yeah, they're making scaremongering films and films that are debunking myths that I think people have, you know, yeah, COVID deniers. It's like, do we really need to entertain that? Yes, I don't. Think it's a bit. It's a bit insulting, you know. There, yeah. Of course, there's people out there who think it doesn't exist. They're yeah. knobheads. We shouldn't bother giving them yeah. the time of day. You can question right? something without having there's to other, be a knobhead. There's other yeah. things to, we could be doing, other positive things to be doing. Yeah. Right. And they said, why are we continuously confronted with apocalyptic and headline-grabbing news about killer virus mutants? It was interesting. <laughs> yeah. Matt Hancock, it does sound like a series from Doctor Who. Matt Hancock said, we won't be safe until these mutants, like 
this, these mutations it are like X Men. Yeah, but someone came back to me and went, "They're a virus. They mutate All every the day. Time. You know, virus, that's yeah. what a virus does to survive." Yeah. Um, <laughs> so when you've got a killer virus mutant, no, you've got a virus. Yeah, that absolutely. has mutated because yeah, yeah. that's what they do. I don't understand this one, and it was in this was this was the features are a uh, um, fact checked image on that one. The author of the long term Ding Dong article. I don't know what that means, but it's been done by Doctor Eric Ding. He also wrote a journalistic masterpiece on why it is great to wear two masks mm -hmm. and then shows exactly that you were saying, the thing that we got into trouble with America today, exactly the same image. Yeah, 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 yeah. That we and, got fact-checked. And for, I'm guessing yeah. this doctor has said, well, if you wear two masks. Yeah. I think he might have even been using the picture we used to, to make his claim why two masks is better than one. Yeah. But we won't go into that because it's too complicated. Mm -hmm. And then 17 is evolution has equipped us with a unique feature that is able to fight off pathogens. This feature is our immune system. Mm. It is concerning that the uh, World Health Organization is now defining that herd immunity can only be achieved through vaccination. Mm. It has not worked that way since humans existed. <laughs> yeah, we haven't had always had vaccinations, no. have we? <laughs> so, and we've built up immunity. Yeah. The next one I like because the it's next one topical. is us. Yeah, we'll, we'll put our mask <laughs> colors to this mask. Yeah. The immune system works well unless it is overstrained. Mm. As most of the immune system is located in the intestine, gut microbiota plays a vital role in the immune system's functionality. Mm. So 70% of your immune system exists in your gut. Yeah. Going back to the public information, could yeah, a people. respected doctor not go, try some Actimel, yeah. try some Yakult. We're going to have a word with the supermarkets and we're going to make it, instead of yeah. three quid, we're going to make it 50p. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to send it to food banks. Yeah. And when you get your vaccination, you're going to get a couple of bottles of kefir to help your gut yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing been on the news about that. However, there have been programs, your kind of lifestyle type programs, your how to lose a stone in a week programs. Yeah. There have been some programs on the evening kind of talking about gut health and more, more than there probably has been. There's been yes. some ones yes. about, de you know, debunking how much vitamin C you need. Because I think, you know, if, it, if you have too much vitamin C, you literally your body just dumps it out of in your urine anyway. Yeah, yeah, so there is a max. Yeah. So your body's yeah. quite clever at doing all these things. So there's a few things going on, but why isn't there more energy going into that, yeah. I guess? Yeah, just just some common, Make, well, yeah, common sense people, committee, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the last one, I'm not going to do all of them. This is the last one, because yeah, some of sure. the others, I think, just take a standard rabbit hole. The last yeah, one, yeah. and I think this sums it up for me. Dr. Simon says, I think that many conditions mentioned above are preventable, but intentional. Now, I'm not sure what he means by that. Mm, mm. What I think he means is maybe you go to a larger is there some you know the back to the wheel yes. played is there a larger yeah. thing at, at stake here the great reset what's well, the other one he does go on to the great reset this <laughs> right. is why i don't want to go down that no, rabbit no, hole. No, what no, i want no, to what sure. i want to say on that is if we take it that many conditions mentioned above are preventable yes the martian coming down is going obesity is killing millions of people yeah. but everything's full of sugar yeah everyone's just pointing, no everyone's just pointing the other way aren't they yes yeah you go, but what about that thing behind you? No, it's it's over there. You need to look yeah. at nothing to see here. Yeah. You need to look yeah. over there. So he said, there are thousands of truths out there that provide explanations of the current phenomenon. The big picture, I don't know. But we surely need to speak up and seek many dialogues on eye level. When we, we mentioned the great, and you're absolutely right, we shouldn't go down that because it also, it makes a little bit of a mockery of the things we've just talked about. Yes. The microbiome isn't, is the Great it? Reset. <laughs> no, it's it's not. It's better. not the biggest lie of of of, uh, of mankind's existence. You know. So there's, mm. you know, what I mean. Some of these things that have always been in place and we know about and is undeniably fact. Yeah. Are getting kind of a little bit distorted. Well, not little, quite quite distorted amongst all the. There's a there's an ulterior motive. Okay. Yes, and there probably is. But again, it's perspective, isn't it? And picking out the stuff that. Even if we don't want to discuss the Great Reset or we don't want to discuss control of populace or whatever, mm, mm. I've quite often in these pods go, if I could have five minutes, it's like I said, if I could have five minutes with, you know, the manager of Sainsbury's to discuss this or five minutes with that, if I could have 15 minutes with Chris Whitty, Matt Hancock and Boris Johnson and go, hand on heart, do you reckon if we gave your, your idea, every old person three months supply of vitamin D mm. as they turned up for their vaccine. Do you think on balance it's a good idea or a bad idea? <laughs> yeah. And if they went, it's a bad idea, Chris Whitty and Matt Hancock go, no, it's a bad idea and couldn't explain why something that, that yeah. isn't going to harm it, you. Yeah. yeah. Then, then, then I'd have some serious concerns. I think if it was like, you know, done on a lie detector, they would go, well, it isn't going to do any harm. Yeah, absolutely. And the fact that we've given it out to two and a half million people 
we haven't made it easy for them to get it, but we have given it out to them, shows that vulnerable people should be taking it. Yeah, yeah. Which make, debunks the whole thing yeah. of like, we're not going to... And if we said to someone, would it make sense if we, if we actually actively worked out how to reduce sugar consumption mm. in this country? Yeah. And they went, generally, yes, that's a good idea. So all the things we've just read out yeah. could be done. Yeah, yeah. Could pe- people... And, and, and give, we're not the first people to be raising them. No. You know, Jamie Oliver has been banging on about sugar for years and years yeah. and years, hasn't he? yeah. Look at the battle he had. And Coca Cola you know. is one of the biggest funders of research in America. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest. Why are Coca Cola doing stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is to make sure that saturated fat is seen as the killer and not sugar. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think this comes back to common sense committee. Most of the so. things that we've just read out there are common sense. Yeah, I think you're right. So what is judgment? Mm-hmm. Um, Fire. So the, the Wikipedia definition mm-hmm. of judgment is the evaluation of evidence to make a decision. The term has four distinct uses. So informal, opinions expressed as facts. Mm-hmm. Informal and psychological, used in reference to, to the quality of cognitive faculties and adjudicational capabilities of particular individuals, typically called wisdom or discernment. Legal, used for context of legal trial to refer to a final finding, a statement or ruling based on a considered weighting of evidence called adjudication. And religious, used in the concept of salvation to refer to the adjudication of God in determining heaven or hell Mm. for each and all human beings. God's assessment of a person's worth, a determination of good, conveys great value while evil conveys worthlessness when when you mentioned judgment day that last bit hadn't come into my mind what the religious which is part of it yeah that's what most religions are judged on on, your behavior and your life yeah Yeah. and that dictates that that is bad behavior if it's going against god's word and god's way is an interpretation yeah yeah. Uh, additionally, judgment can mean personality judgment, a psychological phenomenon of a person forming opinions of other people. I mean, we don't do nobody does no. that. We don't do that yet. The thing I wanted to talk about yep. is moral judgment. Mm-hmm. This week in the news, um, moral judgment has been banded around with regards to the fairness or unfairness of how COVID vaccines are being shared and distributed across the EU. Yep. Very topical, right yep. this minute, even last night. Yeah, there's the some changes even with, this morning as well. With the, yeah, with the Northern Ireland border yes. and everything yes. else. I was in my car on the way to work on Five Live, 28th of January. This was, and I'll put the link up to this because it's mm-hmm. done. It's on the because you won't get it on iPad. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, it is on there. Oh, is it? Yes, yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, that's another episode, isn't, isn't it? it? They yeah. see the rate. All the radio programs seem to be on iPlayer. Okay, the BBC News isn't. Anyway, mm. we'll leave it there. Um, so there's a guy on there called Dr. Mark Ecclestone Turner. Uh, lecturer in global health law from Keele University, and he advises the WHO on pandemic uh, vaccine global, mm-hmm. global supply. Mm. Quite a, yeah, very I think he's had a quiet few years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he's been having it at the ground recently. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be working late. Sorry. The row between the UK and the EU, pretty much coming down to export bans and control, was entirely predictable. He's been predicting it for months. And the vaccines are a highly finite resource, as we know, where yeah. the demand vastly outstrips the supply. Mm. He says that the argument is essentially tone deaf when you consider the global picture yeah. and that the UK and the EU are very catered for in terms of the vaccine supply. Yes. Yes. Kind of we're touching on this in the last episode, which is why I was jumping up and down going. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the global picture, nearly 6 billion people live in low and middle income countries. 6 billion? 6 billion. So that's out of 8, isn't it? So 8, I think. What, total uh, world? Yeah. Mean? yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. Only 25 doses have been given to those countries. Okay. It's not 25,000, 25 minutes, 25. Okay. To this point, so he said this on the, 20, on the 28th. Okay. okay. So high-income countries have dominated that supply from the beginning and continue to dominate that supply mm-hmm. right now. That's what the argument's all about. So there are billions of people who are going without the vaccine and will continue to go without the vaccine for a very long time. Yeah. And some are saying might be forever they may never get they may never see anything well it's probably mutated to something different by the time they got this vaccine yeah so countries like eritrea and the drc so democratic democratic (laughs) republic of congo um are getting nothing and perhaps won't ever see anything certainly for the foreseeable future they're not going to get it so the row that's happening right now is that the block and i thought this was interesting because now they're referring to the eu as a block yeah so so, which i you know it's a trading block i understand that but they're just the BBC again. We're having a bit of a pop at the BBC, mm. but they're using the the word block a lot. Yeah. And I start to, you could probably read, maybe it's me just reading into it a little yeah. bit more, but I think that's kind of interesting the way they're using that, mm-hmm. especially with, you know, blocking supply. Well, and, also, you know, it's like, like, it's a little bit um, Eastern European, yes, the Soviet like block. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
So the bloc, the EU, is feeling hard done by because they feel they're receiving fewer doses than they originally agreed yeah. and perhaps expected. So zero regard for the low and middle income countries. Mm. So according to Dr. Mark, as I'm going to call him, uh, not you, mm. um, there are two reasons why the vaccine has to be rolled out simultaneously to these lower yeah. income countries. So one, we have a moral case that just because we are born in high income country doesn't give us the right at all to get it first. No. The second point was there is a public health imperative here. Yes. The health of our nations are intimately dependent on each other. What we're it was opportune what I said last time. It was, absolutely, yeah. Silky so, smooth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. So whilst the virus rips through low and middle income countries, mutations of the virus would increase mm -hmm. as they are now. And then yes. That's happening yes. here. Yeah. And the vaccines we are merrily pumping into our privileged arms, he didn't say that, that was me no. paraphrasing, <laughs> may in the future not be effective in fighting these strains. We're too busy yeah. fighting, a, you know, like bold men fighting over a comb. Yeah the EU and the UK, yeah. whilst it is merrily mutating at a rate in other countries. Yeah. So in summary, our global health, ergo our global wealth and prosperity, will not return to normal unless there is a global response to this. Yeah. Rather than a, just a, almost a local village kind of view. It's very, it's very narrow. It's a very narrow view. Mm. So back to the moral judgment and moral duty. So Stella Kirikardis bad pronunciation she's european she's a greek politician mm -hmm. european commissioner for health and food safety said that astrazeneca had a moral duty to treat the eu similarly to the uk in terms of its vaccine supply mm -hmm. saying it was unfair that the uk got in first and secured its orders <laughs> dr mark was saying um and this is the bit that almost made me crash my car when i heard i was just like yeah. I've, I've got to find this again listen back to yeah. it and feature it he said quote that is like saying a moral duty exists to the EU because the EU paid for a moral duty. That's not how moral duties work. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was brilliant. Mm -hmm. I guess the summary for me is this isn't about moral judgment, not just about moral judgment, but this is about entitlement. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Totally. And he just, he just put it in that context. And you're like, what are we doing? And there's people um, phoning in to Five Live because uh, Nikki Campbell was um, reading out some of the texts from people. I mean, there was, there's a lot of people... I'll give up my, I don't, you yeah, know, yeah, I'm a middle-aged yeah. person. I'll give my vaccine to someone who needs it over me. You know, we're okay. You know, we can work from home. We have inf infrastructures yeah, not yeah. to go out and stuff. And some people are writing and going, I'm not going to give mine to anyone in Italy. I'm having it kind of thing. So yeah. there's a real... Can I just, just Sorry. step in with what mm. you were saying? Because this, this, this resonates with me in terms of the effective altruism. And I was just thinking back, um, this is indicative of, of, of the point you're making. I use the example of effective altruism and we use the comparison between training a guide dog for somebody in the UK yeah. or fixing something for 40 people in India that would ensure they didn't go blind. And it's that, mm -hmm. it's that whole bit about is it more important because it's close to home or is it more important because you've saved 40 people? Or, you know, yeah. And we had, that, we had yeah. that discussion um, and we looked at every angle, I think. What was going through my mind there was when we've done all the vulnerable groups and we've done all the key workers, and yeah. we've, we're down to a 25-year-old fit person yeah. who has a 99.997% <laughs> chance surviving, of surviving. Yeah. Yeah. And they take that vaccine because this government... And actually, I have found a document that I saved as one of my 3,000. We've now gone over 3,000 <laughs> screenshots. screenshots. Bravo. Um, and this is fair play to the government not from necessarily a moral point of view, but from the, um, from from a logistics point of view, mm. they had pre-orders for 360 million doses of vaccine. Right. So some that haven't even come through the regulation that are still being looked at, they've uh, got uh, pre-orders. Yep. It's 360 million. There aren't 360 million of us. No. So they're thinking, well, some of them aren't going to be regulated and some of them aren't going to be. So brilliant planning, 100% yeah. brilliant planning. You can't even export them to the EU now, no. <laughs> because the tariffs are too high. But it did make me think if we got all 360 million... It starts to get a little bit un unsettling, yeah. doesn't it? So the point I wanted to make is you've got a vaccine going into the arm of a fit 25-year-old with no comorbidities and no obesity and blah, blah, blah. Yep. And that's well and good, and that's a, a, a citizen of the UK. But if that isn't given to a vulnerable 75-year-old in Democratic Republic of Congo, then we're not going to get the virus under control. That's always going to be a problem. In the Congo. No, absolutely. So what will then happen is that when the whole of the UK is fine and vaccines and everything's hunky-dory, a lot of the world will then be have to be cut off, both yeah. in terms of going to that country, yeah. because it will still be rife. If the yeah. vaccine is the only cure, this is saying. Of course. Yeah. Immunity might take over. Yes, but if, if we yeah. take the vaccine line, it's the yeah. only cure. So it'll there be, therefore be... 
you can't go to the Democratic Republic of Congo yeah. because it's still and they, rife And they there. can't come anywhere near And they Europe. can't come here. Yeah. So the poorest countries of the world are going we'll to get, be ostracized yeah. from the... They're going to get poorer. Yeah. And but might, it doesn't get might, away the problem. No, no, of course. And it might it's not even about movement either. It might even be about export and everything else. Who yes. knows? It was a real kind of eye-opener. Yeah. Part of this is not that we have that audience where everyone's going to hear it. We no. don't have that power, do we, on this no. <laughs> little old podcast? But that would be great to have... It's, a, it's something that Channel 4 would do. They go, here's a guy and he's got this view. He, he advises the WHO. Yeah. And off they pop. And yeah. they've just had a view of that, a view of that. And they, I think they do, they do quite a good job. Mm-hmm. In other, other channels, that would never be the case. No. So my, my, my kind of annoyance is why can't more people hear that? Yes. He's, he advises the WHO. He's not a, a crackpot. I'm doing yeah. air quotes. Yeah. He's yeah. not a COVID denier. He's not an anti-vaxxer. Like you said. Common sense committee. <laughs> yeah. I think you might have said just just off mic that if you have a, a slightly alternative view, yes, to to the, the MSM, yeah, yeah, you're a, you're a nut job, yeah, you're you're a denier, yes, you know, you're anti vax you're anti masky you're just like, oh, can we just have some kind of conversation in the snug if you don't, you know, if you yes. don't mind? Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? And it's terrifying. Yeah, and a little bit back to the podcast before last, which kind of took a turn at forty-two minutes, mm. was that kind of that anxiety that you were feeling, and I'm going, yeah, I feel it too. But where do you even start? Yeah, and my mum would probably say, I just want to bang your heads together. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to get the world leaders? And this Dr. Mark was going, where's the global leadership? Yeah, yeah. Where's the leadership from our individual countries to get together with everybody else from every other country and go, what are we going to do with this? Yeah, this is on everybody's doorstep. Well, there's a clue, can't we there's have a clue in the name pandemic. If the BBC, I think we're second to Israel in terms of <laughs> number of people. That no, have, I'm, just, I'm just thinking, you know, leaderboards. Yeah. That's all they're obsessed about at the moment. Yeah. So we're second. So in we can't the world. give any of our vaccinations away because that'll screw our stats. Yes. Wouldn't it? Yeah. So what, why haven't we very good? Oh, we've been nice and giving it to the, you know, to the low, lower income but countries the, in Eritrea. That's, <laughs> that's the balance, isn't it? The you balance. asshole. <laughs> How dare you help the poor? Yes. <laughs> and underprivileged. <laughs> And it doesn't mean we necessarily have to go without. Why can't it, you be the world leader in helping lower middle income countries? Yeah. Or Boris Johnson goes, Imagine. what we're going to do is we're going to do everyone down to 30 and everybody who's got any sort of underlying health condition. And that will free up 15 million. Yeah, that will. And if out. you really want it, on, mm. once we told you the balanced argument and you still want it, you're welcome to have it because you're a UK citizen. Mm. But if you feel in the same way that people don't go for a flu jab, yeah. you don't want it. Let's give it to someone who... Cool. And yeah. what we will do is we will transport every one of these. You probably couldn't do the Pfizer one after my argument last <laughs> time, but, you know, the one jab ones. Yeah. Or when we've done every one, if we've still got pre-orders in for another 20 million, we'll send them over there. Yeah. What a lovely gesture that would be. We make snap judgments, don't we? Yeah. I just had a little look at the science behind that. Doing, we always like to look at the brain, don't we, mm-hmm. in this little section. Uh, so before we, we can finish blinking our eyes, we've already decided whether we want to hire, date, hate, or make friends with a person we're encountering for the first time. Totally. These first impressions colour the way we interact with, with other people from that point forward. And all of this happens outside of our awareness in the unconscious processes of the mind, research shows. So the human tendency to, as the old idiom says, judge a book by its cover has become a source of extensive psychological study. The science of snap judgments is more than just figuring out what we can tell by looking at each other. Knowing how people size each other up from day to day has significant implications for identifying and subduing implicit bias, discrimination and stereotyping. Mm. Even in cases where we already have a lot of information, a snap judgment overpowers decision making. Billions of dollars are spent annually across the globe to advance political campaigns. Voters in the media scrutinise a candidate's platform, voting record, experience and qualifications. But studies have shown that when we step into the voting booth, the candidate's face drives our decision. In a study published in 2005, it's a bit old now, but... Uh, students at Princeton University were shown photos of candidates from the last three U.S. congressional races. As each pair of candidates came up on the computer screen, the students were asked to judge who looked more competent. On average, the students picked the actual winner of the election Mm. almost 70% of the time. Um, Evidence points to accuracy in some of the snap judgments we make about other people. Telling whether someone is extroverted or shy is easy. Multiple studies have shown that judgments of someone's extroversion made by looking at that person's photograph, even for just 50 milliseconds, predict how extroverted he or she actually is. Right back, the very first line you read out. Uh, Before blinking our eyes, we've already decided we want to hire, date, hate or mate. Yeah. 
friends with the person we're... Higher date. That these first impressions colour the way we interact with other people from that point forward. Yeah. So the point I was going to say was, speaking to someone the other day, and they were saying that they had met up with an old school friend and said, oh, basically it was quite surprising because we had a lot of animosity at school. Mm-hmm. And, and and they said, and having met them, we seem to have a lot in common. Mm. And it took me back to that, hate isn't the opposite of love, indifferences. Mm. And I thought when you were saying that, there's two things that came to mind, that quite often the snap judgment isn't necessarily, I have an attraction to that person, mm-hmm. but it is, I have a reaction to that person. Yeah. So that that's one thing. Yeah. The second thing I was thinking on hiring is I always felt a, a degree of guilt when I do. I used to interview a lot, and I sort of knew. Yeah, yeah. From the handshake, from the the, the body language, from just the eye contact, and well, you were nearly always right. And this comes back yes. to our gut yeah, feeling, you're right. doesn't it? As and a human being, we've that's caveman stuff, and it but, is based on on your own skin isn't it your experience is what you've experienced yeah. and if if you're worldly wise or wildly widely traveled or yeah. or you've done a thousand interviews yeah it's going to be more informed isn't it yes if you just go what are they wearing yeah we all do it we can't yes. we can't say no i wouldn't do such a thing i'd like to hear what they've got to say yeah. and it's like piss off now we all do it yeah. but there is another that isn't it if you're in a professional services industry there is a someone coming in in a hawaiian t-shirt and shorts and flip-flops could be the best candidate and the reality is you, know you, I mean? you, you look at people i mean it's like hollister the clothing company only really employed people that they considered attractive and pretty and of a certain shape yeah literally yeah so you can have all the equal opportunities yeah they couldn't say that but that's what they no. did <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and if you look at people on the news yeah I, yeah I, yeah you could not get oh well there's a lot of diversity and there's a lot of that but there they, they still have a certain look or yeah. a certain charm or a certain level of intelligence yeah. you don't get someone there there's this there's this aesthetics isn't yes. there yeah. No. No. I know what you mean. It's um. We can't all be. What's the word? Do you mean that we're so sort of neutral that we don't form we're, any opinions? Yeah. I don't think anyone could sit there and no. just kind of go. I just. I, I, well, I was just looking at my phone. <laughs> because now. we all have. We all have it. That's a bit where I was going with the last pod, talking about your judgment and the yes. versions of you. you yes. Know, wrong. Wrong way of putting it. But that. No. That I've, I've, it. I've listened to what you said, and I think sometimes what I've done is try and exclude a judgment that is probably an instinctive thing yeah it's, it's, it's that like, balance thing just because you yeah. come in and said all those things doesn't mean you you don't i know where they're coming from yeah there's frustration that's based on stuff that you know things, yeah. things don't change it's frustrating people are it doesn't mean you don't like them doesn't no. mean you don't want to hang out it's with a commentary them. on life yes, isn't it's, it? it's yeah, yeah exactly um what i was just looking up and i wasn't being rude there where you're doing that last bit was <laughs> not that i have a problem with my height but one of the things that I thought you never was, bring it up. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of the things I thought was how I tall is Jim? stood up doing this. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> how tall is Biden? Right. Okay. So that went through my mind, and I thought when I see why, no, no, I'll tell you for why. Okay. Right. <laughs> I've always had this opinion that the criteria for being American president. What, it's, like, it's like the fire service. You I think need to be at least minimum, six two. I think there's a minimum height requirement. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Yes. Yes way. All right. All right. You mean you're deadly serious? Yeah, no, I'm deadly serious. Right. The reason being is that the American perception of that, their leader. Now I'm thinking about it. I I'm only thinking about the ones I've I can remember in my lifetime, but they've all been well average we, and we, above, haven't we? We don't know how tall they are. So the tallest Do ever, they not say? Well they do if you Troll down like I have. How, how far have you gone back to Abraham Lincoln? How big you? I bet he was a big lad. Top of the charts. Is he? Big oh, Abe, six foot four. Big <laughs> six four. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if you get... Have you got them all there? If you, you get, all... if you get the whole lot in order, I'll give you a tenner. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we're not going to go through them all. I was literally just about to start. Yeah. Trump's third. So the point I'm going to make is this. What's he? Six... Six three. I would imagine, as a judgment, American people would not vote in... A man who is four foot ten high. Or a woman. No, no. I'm saying as a man, because the criteria are different for women. All right. The judgments wouldn't be made. As you say, Hillary on Clinton. Well, Hillary Clinton again. Yeah. She was but height isn't, five foot eight, isn't right. the criteria, is it? It's it's around No 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 when you when you're, you're when, manly and you're a fighter and you're a protector. Been, yeah. That's no, right. I hear what you're saying. So very, very quickly, I'm just gonna run through this. Trump six three. Mm-hmm. I'm only gonna do recent ones. Even Reagan was tall. Yeah, I Wasn't didn't he? Was. So George Bush, 6'2", Clinton, 6'2", Barack Obama, 6'1 and a half, JFK, 6'1", Ronald Reagan, 6'1". And Amazing. then you come down, Gerald Ford, 6 foot, Richard Nixon, 5'11 and a half. That's, so, <laughs> yeah. that's what we said before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm 5'11 five, five and then 3'8". <laughs> yeah. 
Um, whereas I go, I'm almost six foot. Yeah. Um, George W. Bush, the other one, five eleven and a half. Joe Biden, five eleven and a half. So I think in that, those are the top twenty. I would have put Biden being taller than George Bush Junior. Yeah. Mm, I reckon George Bush Junior is lying about his height. But the point I'm making, that's co- I think I've covered there. The <laughs> only ones that really I haven't covered this is, this in our lifetime is. This just has occurred to you. No, no, no. I've always thought this. Oh, okay. So the only ones... been dying for, waiting for the time yeah. to bring it up. <laughs> so the only ones of recent years that I can find who don't fit that criteria, Jimmy Carter, yeah. five, nine and a half. Uh-huh. That's it. Wow. He's the only one Good in point. my lifetime under five foot 11 and a half. So the criteria around judgment is that judgment's already been made. Yeah. And I guess this goes back to the yeah. podcast before last when I've said if you're in certain tracks. So my chance mm. is now of being an American president, r- rely on built-up shoes. <laughs> I wonder where this was going. You want to be president? I'm going to give it a go. I think you should. But I'm going to have to have built-up shoes. Correctional shoes, yeah. That's probably all I need. Yeah, you probably need an American birth with... certificate as well, but that's just a technicality. I could go Ask in on... Obama. I could go in on Kanye, couldn't I? What? I could go on Kanye. What do you mean go on Kanye? Team on his shoulders? Him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it for this episode. Well done for getting this far and thanks for listening. If you're enjoying this pod and feel like you're getting something out of it, then please do subscribe and give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and um, tell a friend or two or three or four. Um, give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter at I'm Finecast and you can send an email to us at I'm Finecast at gmail.com. In the next episode, we might drop in a conversation with a new feature. Oh, yeah, we have. We've got some, uh, we've got some PR to do, haven't We're we? We're growing. Quite literally. Oh, I like see what you've done there. Yeah. So yeah, we might if it That's goes exciting. well. I totally forgot about that. The conversation with might be dropped. So yeah, we. <laughs> so this, this, this as vague as anything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. See you next episode. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye.